podcast for Monday the 15th of April 2024. I am your host James Batchelor, Editor-in-Chief of Games to Drop Biz and I am joined as always by Christopher Dring, Head of Games to Drop Biz. Uh, we are actually recording this on Friday the 12th of April, um, post-BAFTAs, so uh, apologies now for the very post-BAFTA voice. Uh, how's your voice holding up, Chris? It's doing all right. I, I, did, the, I, did, this, I did this ridiculous thing and it was like at midnight or whatever it was at the BAFTAs where I got an email from BBC Five Live. I said, oh, do you mind appearing on our show tomorrow morning to talk about it? I went, oh, yeah, talk about the BAFTAs. I went, yeah, what time was that? Half five. So I had about, <laughs> I had about three hours sleep. Um, and the, um, I did get a little bit more afterwards. But, uh, yeah, uh, I'm doing all right, actually. I'm, I, I would, I'm wearing a hoodie right now. So people watching on the video, I apologise, but I was, I, I was rocking a really cool red suit at the BAFTAs last night. It was, um, it was an impressive suit. Uh, yeah. Not as impressive as the array of winners. That's a cheesy segue, but I'm going to go to it because uh, our pre-show <laughs> banter is getting out of hand. And I, I really enjoyed last night. Like, it was a really good kind of showing. Like, um, well, I think it was this. the best Games Awards event I've ever been to. It was, it was really good. And what, what was impressive was like it was the lineup. Like there were so many categories there where usually you watch the um, awards and you, the, you know, the, the nominees are, and you see them all listed, and you're like. That one's that that one's the winner, or those two might be the winner. And like most of the categories last night, I was like it could literally be any of these. Yeah, like they, not they they're just all of like a really really good quality. Like I, the Baftas, I find is the one that always really kind of fuels my enthusiasm for gamers. Like there are so many great games that I haven't finished, I haven't played, and like yeah, yeah, it was really really good. Scene radio, like radio, the the five live show I was on um, said, um, were there any surprises? And I'm a bit like, I, there couldn't really have been any. Because no. if he's oh Baldur's Gate three won, that wasn't a surprise. Right, he's been cleaning up all awards season. But if it had been Alan Wake, also wouldn't have been a surprise. And if yeah. it had been Zelda, wouldn't have been a surprise. <laughs> it was just like if it could have been any of these games, it really could have done. Um, and um, and it really was. There was a couple interesting. I was trying to think. Was there a category where I thought oh, that's a bit weak? I wondered if it was multiplayer of all the categories. Yeah, yeah. No, it was because it was like it was Call of Duty and it was Mario. I think Mario won it and. Um, and it's, it's good multiplayer mode in Mario, but it is the it is the classic two D Mario multiplayer mode, and I well, it, a few improvements. And I and I but I was, um, and I just thought to myself that was probably the one where you know, you might there might have been for the taking there. But yeah, it was just the quality of it was great. I felt the thing is what I love about the Baftas. I have a love-hate relationship with the BAFTAs or maybe a like-dislike is never quite that strong um, uh, down the years and I don't know if you must have had it as well James the amount of times that we've had calls with whoever's the new head of BAFTA or the BAFTA or whatever to yeah. give our views on BAFTA and their involvement with games and and um, and sometimes they're really good and sometimes they're rubbish we worked with them last year on the HR summit and it was mostly good but it was a little bit annoying we're not there this year so if there's an element of like the BAFTA, I've always been a bit um, funny with them, but I felt they nailed it last night. Mm, I just absolutely. just felt um, it was, they got the, the, the pacing right, the host right, maybe one or two many influencers handing out awards that I didn't know. <laughs> uh, maybe that's more about but me then, than them. But then, <laughs> I, I think that's an us problem. Like I, I, I actually, because I was sitting there, it's like, I have no idea who these people are. But equally, I think that's better than, like I remember the days when the BAFTAs would like bring just some random person from like film and tv yeah but I, I i know i know but some people like that they, they, yeah. that's the thing with awards you know we've done we've run so many here yeah, and i always come back from every awards thing with a list of all the things i would do differently the next year and i am and i inevitably start doing that for other people's awards as well yeah. like i had tons for the game awards i had even more for the gdc awards actually um the other week about all the things that i would have done oh, i won't do that next year this is changed next year but with the baftas last night Probably, it's a very small list I thought it was a really good vibe I also think you know it wasn't just about those big AAA mega games mm. it was about you know the game about Vember Vember 1 and Cheer 1 and uh, Viewfinder 1 2 and, and these are games that are about they are so different and not just indie Day of the Diver which isn't indie but it, it's sort of it, it's a smaller game and it's a yeah. unique game and it's ones that are sort of sort of celebrate shows games as an art form rather than a commercial thing and it's so much more about the people and it was spot on. Um, do, do that again. Um, yeah. <laughs> the it lineup, was... I don't think, will be quite as competitive next year, but just do that no. again. It was great. Funny enough, I was talking with them, the people I was sitting with like after, after was, it was like, that was a really, really strong year, obviously, because the, you know, the sheer number of amazing games that came out in 2023. It's hard to know what 2024's lineup's going to look like at this stage. Like, you know, what's it's weird that we don't know that at this stage. It is weird. Oh, yeah. Well, you, you did... Um, 
you did an introduction talk at um, the London Developer Conference yesterday, and you like ch chokingly but quite rightly said, like, we know more about the lineup for 2025 than we do for 2024. Like, in terms of, in <laughs> in terms some of ways, the big it. things that are, in some ways, in terms of the big things that are going to move the needle. Um, so, I'd, like, so, yeah, it was kind of, it, it, it really kind of underlined how strong last year was in terms of um, yeah. you know, the, the big blockbuster video games, but also, like, as you say, like, you know, the, the indies that just absolutely smashed it. Like, there were so many indies there that were deserving of, of even more recognition like the yeah yeah i just like the way it's all mixed together as well it wasn't like yeah. one or the other um it really showed games as it was a there was a talk during london developer conference so it was sandwiched between two numbers talks there was mine which is naturally a bit numbersy yeah because that's, that's what i'm like and then it was a new zoo afterwards and then in mm. the middle there was this uh, interview with keza mcdonald from the guardian where it was all about the new people that have discovered games from the pandemic it wasn't mm. all about that but that was that was being talked about and it was talked about um games that are going you know games that appeal to people who aren't necessarily um call of duty or gamers gamers and about how the industry's not really doing enough to i mean the indies are doing it but that we're not doing enough as an industry to really cater to this new audience that we've found and it was talking about the cultural impact the artistic impact and about how people are now playing games for longer but people playing games sorry that are older people are discover you know keza gave an example of someone she met who's just started playing skyrim and about how that's something that people do now you know you, you didn't get people um in 2000 saying i've just played the least new last ninja game like it just didn't you didn't get that and and you're getting that now and it's sort of the way the industry's matured and that was actually a really quite juxtaposition against the the numbers at the ldc i thought um uh because and bafta sort of speaks to that as well it's that video games as an art form because there was a line in that which i've actually spoken to quite a few people about which i loved it's just i caught him inspired me really the amount of times we talk about how much money games make yeah i was going to bring this up like so so yeah kaza mentioned that yeah like the conversation is always around how much money it makes the fact that video games make more money than film t film and tv combined and like and i actually saw um kaza's colleague keith stewart is also at the guardian like he was tweeting that he'd heard a bbc radio six report yesterday about the baftas and they barely talked about the nominees and then they were talking about the fact that you know yes video games make more money than film and tv and yes grand theft auto is made in, in the uk and it's like how are we not past this conversation yet like how is the well it's us it's on us right we yeah. do this we're the ones that project this out so we're the ones going to bbc or cnn or sky news and going we make more money than film and they inevitably start with the you make more money than film aren't you You're bigger than film and tv yes. which by the way is a revenue number we're not bigger in terms of ubiquity i don't believe for a second we're no. as big as in as, as film and music well, our, in that our price tags are slightly higher yeah than, uh, and, and, and you know my you know i don't i suspect more grandparents listen to music than play video games like it's <laughs> not it's um and it but it, it's it's um Regardless of that, though, that's true. You know why? You know you don't see you don't see only individual companies do it. But you don't see many industries go. We make X amount of money. We're bigger than the fishing industry. You know, it's sort of like you don't. It's like well, since when was that? A, well, since when was that a, a talking point in the media? Like I get it when you're trying to convince government to give you some tax breaks. But why are you doing it when you're um, yeah. um, in, in, the, in when you're talking about the games industry and about how special we are? And that's what the Baftas did. The Baftas was like, hey this is what we do we do we do stuff about there was you know, you talked about hellblade and the impact of mental health there was a game being shown about kindness on yeah. stage you know there was a game one of the ga winning games was about an immigrant family in canada uh, one of the winning games was about um, okay viewfinder has an environmental message sort of layered upon the top of it like yeah. those are the things that games are doing and we're not talking about we're talking about look how many people we can, who, who are shouting in an esports tournament look how many people um, are buying i think how many billions of dollars we're making but it's actually we should be past that now. I don't think we need to show that off anymore. But amongst that sort of, there was also a lot of positivity around the foundations this industry's in and the quality of the stuff that we're making and uh, how we're progressing as an industry and how we're maturing as an industry. And there's, there was obviously a lot of pain going on in games. But um, it, I got the vibe I got out of LDC, similar to GDC actually, is the foundation of this industry is so strong that, um, that, that you know, it, the future is still very bright for us and I, mm. that's why i felt coming out of the bastards yesterday was like oh positive you know and it's yeah. um, and it, hope which was my final slide during my talk was hope <laughs> and it was and i and i still i feel it i feel it 
Like that, that was kind of the. I think I think a lot of people want to be optimistic, like in, in the industry. Like that, that was certainly the vibe for um, most of the LDC talks, like the you know, London Developer Conference talks. I think you kind of ducked out in the morning because you had people to meet and places to be. But um, most of the talks were like we're going to try and focus on the kind of optimism. The you know the studio. The, the last session was a panel about how you grow a game studio nowadays and talking about like you know how you improve your business how you hire new people and like and it's it's all like not negating what's happening obviously you know 18,000 people laid off in the past year and a year and a quarter um like it, no one's kind of denying that stuff no one's saying it's over but people are kind of looking for a way forward and we kind of we're at a stage where we're hoping the worst is behind us um and the opt the, yeah, the, the the overall tone was like right where do we go from here and mm. um, i mean the, you know, there are still there are still there are still concerns out there. Like you know, the IGDA um, yesterday released a kind of a kind of call for action on the fact they've been layoffs. They kind of um, they put out a statement. I'm going to read the statement here. It was uh, with more than eight thousand seven hundred game developers affected by layoffs this year. The gravity of the situation and its impact on the industry cannot be overstated. Developers who hold, hold legitimate concerns regarding the stability of their careers and the industry as a whole, talented individuals, particularly those from historically marginalised communities, may seek opportunities beyond the games industry due to the instability, leading to skill gaps and underrepresentation of various de- demographics. That's something I've heard a lot of talk about: is the concern that if layoffs dramatically, you know, impact those from marginalised communities more than other, you know, more than the you know, your typical straight white bloke, then those people will move to other industries. We won't get them back. Um, the IGADA kind of listed out five suggestions of things that studios must do for things like um, how to keeping the, the headcount reduction to a minimum, kind of emphasizing the fact that you know, head, headcount reductions is very much kind of a, uh, it's a boost to small term finances, but there's long, long, larger costs involved later. The emphasis on the need for transparent communication with your, your, with your teams, encouraging management to use like short term and long term forecast for their company and like you know a lot more kind of awareness of, of risks and stuff I, I mean, all of this you can read on uh gi and if you're watching on youtube the link that is going to be here this corner or this corner um but yeah it, it's again it, it, as much as it was a bit harsher than the kind of the tone on, on stage of london the developed conference there's still the underlying sentiment is we need to move yeah. forward from this we need to improve we need but, to do better like the industry is changing essentially how it works yeah the igda comment I feel it's quite late coming. Like, it, oh, you know, this, this, yeah. I'm like, we're, we're sort of, it's weird that this is in April when this sort of crisis started in January. Yeah. Um, the other thing January with it, last year. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, really, but it's really started yeah. to ramp up this year. Yeah. Um, um, it's the marginalised uh, element of this conversation. I hear this a lot on social media. I've yet to actually see any data that, or any, it seems to be a theory rather than a um I, m- I might be wrong so someone's gonna message me and go chris mm. you've missed this report that tells you everything and i'm sorry um i don't is this true is it really impacting marginalized people more than other groups I, and I is I, that is it is that because as, the idea might... that first it because we've sort of tried yeah. to bring it there more modern i don't know but in my experience right we're seeing growth in the games industry in like places like africa and south africa and india and china and you know obviously the games industry isn't we keep using the word white male um at white and male it's very male um yeah. but obviously the games industry's hearts in Japan and in Asia as well. So it's like, it's yeah, not, it's no, not, it's not entirely yeah. true. That's and, um, and, um, uh, uh, but I, I don't know if that's true. <laughs> I keep hearing those comments, but I'm like, is it, where's I, it? Is, that, is there a report I've missed? Likewise, I, I, I haven't seen the data or the evidence to back this up either, but I think it's, it's good that we're kind of worried about aware, it. Yeah, yeah, agree. I, yeah. My, yeah. The fact that the concern is out there and the mm-hmm. fact that people are warning you like, no, when you're laying off, like we need to be careful about I'm not sending you mm-hmm. the, the no, no, no person when it comes to layoffs is more expendable than anyone else. Like it's, 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 yeah. it's a really, really difficult thing. Like I'm, I'm really hoping that we're seeing a slowdown to the layoffs. Certainly, that was kind of the vibe from the conference yesterday. It's like we're hoping we're going to. There is an element of truth, but you know, we're trying to improve the talent pipeline, so we're trying to encourage yeah. people from different backgrounds at a younger age to get into the industry. But there's no actual junior jobs for them to come into. There is definitely that concern. I can at least I can see the theory, but I just I don't have the. I don't know if this is true or not. The other thing with IGDA's comment, um, there's a bit in it about limiting layoffs. And absolutely, that's true. And, you know, don't be driven by short-term goals. And there's a great, um, what's it, is it, I always forget his name, it's Swen, is it? The, the head of um, Larian. Yeah. Um, he did a bit about how laying people off and then rehiring them later and laying people off and rehiring them later. It kind of, you lose that, lose that institutional knowledge, right? Yeah. You lose that, you know, steady growth. 
being you know careful with your expansion and having a team that's relatively stable and and you learn from each other know how to work together you know we if you look at the gi team like we've actually been pretty much the same team now for about uh four or five years and we i'm not arguing we've never worked any better we know us each other's strengths we know each yeah. other's weaknesses we know what we're good at we know where to turn to for help and ideas and and it's sort of we're working together quite be- and that's because of years and years of working together well you and i've worked together for 17 years like it's, there's a there's um there's a 16 years so it's there's, there's a there's a sort of that 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 i completely agree with that at the same time, a lot of these layoffs are not just driven by the profit, it's driven by the fact that industry has changed. Mm. We are going through a shift in this business. Um, uh, there was a, somebody at LDC said to me that, well, actually, Newsu did a wonderful talk, like, terrifying talk. Oh, yeah. They said, so they, said here, <laughs> they did this bit where they went, like, here is all the hours that people are spending on games. And then it was something like, and I'm going to get the numbers wrong. The data is out there, by the way. Do you want to look for it? I'm sure James will put a link in. Um, the, um, the, uh, the, um, it was something like 60% of those hours are spent on games over six years old. So Grand Theft Auto 5 and Minecraft and Fortnite, that sort of stuff. And, and of that 60%, the majority of it, I can't remember the exact figure, but the majority of it, certainly more than half, is taken by five titles yeah five titles right? like so that so that yeah. means you're not competing that those are established games those are, those people are uh, embedded in those games you're really not going to get them to stop spending hours on those games so you need so you've lost that 60 yeah. percent. and then it went down to and how many people every year the new games that they're playing how many how many of those are fifa and call of duty yeah. and madden and they're basically the same game every year those iterative titles and they're going well, okay that's this amount and i think the number at the end was basically all the new games that come out every year are competing for 8%, 8% of the play time. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was... My, my takeaway from that obviously is how Dominic is like, but how I have so much respect for anyone trying to get into that 8% from yeah. like the indies, from you know people with new life service games, from, like right up to the AAA blockbuster, even AAA blockbusters, new ones are competing for 8%. And but, you think about how many games are coming out on like Steam alone every year, like it's daunting, but like, so the, com- so the competition yes, so the competition it. is mega fierce not in terms of you're not just competing with new you know other new games you're competing with games from 10 years ago now you know i think it's like what we said earlier the idea that people are playing games today that came out 10 years ago was unthinkable in the year 2000 yeah. it, even 2010 right now people are playing games from 20 people from 2014 and 20, gta 3 is 11 years old like 25 is 11 years old like that's not uncommon anymore so um um, the market shifted and changed, um, partic- and we're also, and it's not just that. There are other areas of stuff that shifted and changed. One person talked uh, said to me after one of the talks at LDC that they're seeing the hits are hitting harder than ever, but the misses are missing harder than ever. Yeah. In that, you know, beforehand, if your game missed, it didn't sell quite so well. You could still recover it to a degree. You do some discount. You do some activity. You could get it back to something, you know. But now they're finding they're launching a game that doesn't work. It hasn't hit in the market, and resuscitating that game is almost impossible. And um, uh, it's, uh, I think the word they use is dead cold on slap. And yeah. um, that's the way the market is at the moment. So naturally companies, there's a bit, I think IGDA said, you know, work on multiple projects and split your, split your risk. Mm. But if you know that three of those projects are going to miss in a market where the misses are hurting harder than ever, you can understand why they go, right, we're going to push towards the ones that we think are safer yeah. bets. Um, so there was a few bits so, of that IGDA comments that I'm a bit like, yeah. Uh, some of these layoffs aren't because of short-term profits they're because the market shifted and changed and they rather invest in areas that are working rather than continuing to spend money on teams and areas yeah. and that, that doesn't the human cost is awful that Massively, is the yeah, thing that's the thing that we you know we can't escape from but like if, but, if you're looking on a project basis like I, I'm, I'm going to use sony as an example sony obviously like yeah i think it was like uh, last year year before it was reported they were they were looking to get heavily into the live service say uh, sector and they had 12 live service games in the works and then it was reported that they've cut six of them because again going back to news is you know uh, hours played like it's so difficult even for playstation the console market leader to get something into live service and compete with fortnite grand theft also read league of legends etc it's so difficult that yeah the the notion of spending a particularly uh, playstation budgets you know spending a lot of you know, not necessarily hundreds of millions but certainly like certainly oh, multiple no. millions tens of millions likely on a live service game that if it fails is going to really suffer you can well, understand why it's not even it's not even about it's suffering i mean it is a bit about it suffering but you know if you've got a game that you look at and going this isn't going to work do we spend continue to spend low do we cut our losses do we yeah. take you know do you, and put that money into releasing games on pc yeah. where you know we are seeing a lot more success 
So it's, it is, I mean, these are a horrible business way of looking at it rather than a human way of looking at it. But, you know, the idea of the correction isn't just about cutting costs and making us more sustainable as an industry. It is about that. But it's also about, you know, um, you know, areas of the business that isn't working anymore and putting it into areas of the business that are. Um, and that that sort of doesn't come... IGDA stuff, I think, spot on, broadly speaking. Like, you know, yeah. let's be, be a little bit more mindful of your of the long-term impact of your short-term profit-driven, uh, growth-driven um, efforts. But I think a lot of the companies, it's not really just about that. It's, it's, it's about looking at what they've got and going, we need to focus in on the things that we think will work, mm. looking at the data, looking at the market today and cutting the things that don't. And I, I like to think that's what most businesses are doing. Um, and I think IGDA calling companies to be mindful of that and doing it, you know, is, is makes sense. I just think it's a bit weird that it's coming mid-April rather than, uh, rather than early yeah. February. We're running rapidly out of time. Um, so I'm going to kind of end on uh, one of the more positive notes um, or kind of optimistic notes from the MDC. And like I said, like the whole day was trying to, to be a lot more kind of optimistic was um, I quite enjoyed the end of your talk, the, uh, the end of your presentation, like looking ahead at... It wasn't you know, there. So this talk I've done, I've done it a few times internally and a few things. And it's like it ch- there's a slide in it, which is like 20, end of 2024 will be good. And I've, ev- that, that's become a question mark and it's becoming less and less certain every time I've done the presentation. But the, um, the bit, the this last slide was new and it was about the fact that Power World and Helldivers 2, I mean, I know Helldivers 2 is a sequel. But yeah. It, it might How be many people it, realistically uh, yeah, have the first one? Uh, yeah, it's like it, to a lot of people that was a new game they hadn't yeah. played before. Two games came out of almost nowhere um, and did incredible f- numbers. And they're new games, they're premium games. Okay, yeah. they weren't seventy dollars, but they were new games or premium games. They've been really successful. And okay, Power World may have dropped off quite strongly and held uh, well compared to Hell Divers too. But the point is, big games are playing games, right? They're yeah. buying new games. They are engaging in our stuff. They are, they are loving our what we're putting out and. Um, uh, and also on GI, like in the last what, maybe three weeks, maybe even longer, the amount of stories we've done about new studio openings yeah. and new investment stories, uh, it feels a little more like it was a couple of years ago. Not, not quite as extreme. There are still negative stories amongst those positives, but there are positives now. I can see light, um, which actually I wasn't expecting to see this soon. I thought it was going to take a little longer before we started, maybe towards the end of the year. It's, it's, only, it's only two months after your, uh, your piece about like we're potentially facing two years of pain. And yeah, and I think and I think we, I, I, pain, I, I think we are, least, but I just thought yeah. the I thought the mo- the the moments we can start seeing some of that some positivity might be towards the end of the year when the interest rates might go down and stuff. Yeah. Actually, we're seeing it a little bit now um, post GDC. Whether that's going to continue into the summer, I don't know. But it is certainly there is certainly it feels like the industry has um, uh, slowed down some of that negativity some of that uh, uh, you know, horror stories they're just and some of the more positive stories are starting to bubble to the surface and um i don't know i i feeling a little better about the games yeah. industry at this point um i'm still i'm not <laughs> who knows next week different <laughs> it might be completely different but um and maybe it's just the bafta glow but um it certainly it was certainly a uh uh I, I i feel confidence is starting to come back and i think yeah. that is really important well, we'll see if the BAFTA glow has dimmed and if uh, my post-BAFTA voice has recovered uh, when we return next Monday for the uh, next microcast. And in the meantime, thank you so much for listening or watching, depending on which platform you're on. Uh, you can subscribe to the podcast on the podcasting platform of your choice. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch uh, more of these if you want the video version, if you want the, the faces to go with these weary voices. Uh, and you can get more news, insight and analysis at the world behind video games at gamesindustry.biz. We will see you next Monday. Thank you so much.